I think there's nothing worse, Nikki, than um, being being on the fence. Because when you're on the fence, you get shot from both sides, right? Um, and, and trying to take yourself to that, that situation where you, you've been on the fence and you're not able or you're not allowing yourself to make a decision. Either way, yes or no, it, it doesn't matter. But the, the fact that you're there and you're debating and you're not sure, and it just it puts you on a halt and it really freezes you from moving forward. Because even, and this is what people don't understand, even when you make the decision not to, right, and you're okay with it, that is a decision. You can now move on to other things. Hi, everyone, and welcome to season five of Stand Up and Stand Out. Can you believe it? Are you to season five? It has been a whirlwind year already. A lot has happened. Uh, you guys know after listening to season four that I just launched Chameleon Mindset, my new book about how to embrace change and build mental resilience to transform your life and career. Lots more information obviously coming on Chameleon Mindset. We'll have the new online course coming soon. We've been doing lots of webinars and I'll be on the road for the book tour. So hopefully we'll get to catch up together soon. Um, but uh, because why not just do another one? <laughs> I have another book that just came out, The Great Lead Hership Awakening. In this book, I collaborated with uh, 20 other amazing women. Each of them contributed to chapter talking about when their lead hership was awakened and part of their transformation, maybe over the pandemic or maybe over a longer period of time, uh, really stepping into their power and showing what it means to truly be a leader. Hello, everyone, and welcome to season five of Stand Up and Stand Out. This season, we are interviewing the amazing women of the great Lead Hership Awakening. Today, we have Sherry Gabriel. She is a lifestyler. In her chapter, she talks about how all the actions she has taken have stemmed from having emotional freedom. She offers a few simple steps to help everyone achieve this state and be able to have the lifestyle they desire. Hi, how are you today? I'm great, Nikki. Very happy to be here with you. Thank you for having me. Awesome. We're excited to talk and learn a little bit more about you. If you guys haven't checked out, um, she has chapter 10, how to live in a constant state of emotional freedom. Um, so Sherry, why don't you tell me a little bit about maybe let's start with why did you want to be in this book? Good question. I always joke. I don't know if I wanted to be or, or I was forced to be. <laughs> Linda Fisk, I mean, she's an incredible woman. And uh, I think that when she recommends um, something, I listen, right? There's certain people that, you know, you want to listen to, you want to follow. And so Linda is one of them. So he was telling me about it. And then I kind of put it aside, you know, how you get into the motion of things and then you forget. and then. I think it was a few days before the deadline. She's like, Shiri, the deadline's approaching. You need to be, we want you to be in this, in this book. I'm like, okay. I didn't even think about it much. I signed up for it. And uh, let me tell you, one of the best decisions that I've made lately, um, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. And I didn't know what I was going to write about. But uh, that's, that's really the decision of, of making something for Understanding that this is going to be something good and big for me. I just didn't know what at the moment, but I had that gut feel. So that's really the reason of why and how I joined. I love that. And I think more of us need to do those things, right? I think so many of us keep like the fear kind of holding us back from things that are really good for us. It may be a little uncomfortable, but especially when you have a strong mentor, you know, like Linda sharing this experience, you know, for me, I was at the leadership um, retreat in in October and just being around the other women in person too, that positive energy, I said, you know, good things will come of this. So I know it's, you know, let's go jump in feet first and and enjoy the ride. Exactly. Exactly. Absolutely. And and you're right. A lot of people don't and I talk about that actually, one of the mantras that I that I live my life by that gives me emotional freedom is about making decisions fast, right? Just as I call it, looking into the future and, and not regretting something. I, I love it. And your chapter, it resonated with me a lot because it was definitely where I could see myself in some of those places too. So you talk about emotional freedom and you say that it means that you have the ability to create what you want in any situation and have the freedom to choose. 
Um, so maybe talk about how that has changed your your life and your perspective and 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 brought you to lots of new exciting adventures besides the book. So I'll, I'll do a, a little bit of a reverse into uh, the emotional freedom, because as I said, I didn't know what I was going to write about, but the how I've lived my life, right, being a lifestyler, um, I was thinking about it and how, how do I get to really do everything that I want, that I set my mind to and live life to the fullest. And I arrived at that concept of emotional freedom, which is really that ability to be able to make decisions, number one, right? Number two, be able to really do what you want to do without a permission slip. Many people feel that they need that permission slip to do something, and we really don't. So when we live in that state of emotional freedom, we are able to move forward in life, to make decisions, to do things that we want to do without regrets. I love that. And I know a lot of people talk about financial freedom, but I, I like the pairing of that with emotions because emotions do, I think, oftentimes hold us back, not just our own, but kind of the people around us as well, kind of putting their fears or anxiety on us, you know, and opinions as to whether we should or shouldn't be doing things. Um, so I, I really love that phrase, and and I think it's powerful to to continue teaching people how to do that. Um, you talk about how it helps you make quicker decisions. M- maybe share how that's helped you, and and how you share that with others. I think there's nothing worse, Nikki, than um, being being on the fence because when you're on the fence, you get shot from both sides, right? Um, and, and trying to take yourself to that, that situation where you, you've been on the fence and you're not able or you're not allowing yourself to make a decision. Either way, yes or no, it, it doesn't matter. But the, the fact that you're there and you're debating and you're not sure, and it just it puts you on a halt and it really freezes you from moving forward. Because even, and this is what people don't understand, even when you make the decision not to, right, and you're okay with it, that is a decision. You can now move on to other things. And so the ability to make decisions and make decisions fast, that's the key. Because I've seen people who have eventually made a decision, but they missed out. They missed out on opportunities. They missed out on fun things. They missed out on so many things that they eventually regret. So that emotional freedom, that state of, of I can make a decision, but not only make it, make it fast and be okay with whatever decision I decide. So there's, there's all these components, right? That, that exactly that make the decision making. It's not just making the decision, but it's the journey of how you make the decision is emotionally. How do you feel about it? Right. Are you okay with it? Do you regret it or not? And can you now, are you in that, in that situation of moving on? Because many people don't move on after making a decision, which is even worse. Yeah. I, and I talk about so much about change and change is it happens to us all the time, but it really feels like it's starting to happen more rapidly. One, because of technological advances, but just the state of our interconnectedness as people, you know, globally and, and geography. There's so many things that now, you know, because of the Internet and other things, it, we're not just sort of disparate making our own decisions in our own lives. And I think that has also paralyzed people, even though we need to actually make decisions faster and quicker, we're actually pulling ourselves back because we're so worried about all these interconnection points instead of really making sure that we're making the right decision for ourselves. And I'm I'm sure you've seen that too. Hundred percent. And you know what? Social media, right? Think about it in social media. We are comparing ourselves to others. Right. Um, I, I always talk and I've talked to my teams and, and people about this, my students. There is competition and there is comparison. Right? Competition is great. Competing, competing with yourself, competing even with others. Right. As a great, you know, I, I see that person. I see where they're at. I celebrate them. Right. And, and I learn from them and I wish I would, you know, I can achieve what they have achieved. Great. When you compare your, yourself, in my opinion, There's a little bit of a negative connotation to that and how it makes you feel. Because when you're comparing and you're trying to be like that person, it creates some jealousy. It creates some regret, right? Emotionally, we we get stressed about it. And I think social media creates a lot of that. So we really need to limit how much time we we dedicate to social media. But that's, that's a completely different topic. We're going to talk a whole lot more. 
Hi, everyone. My name is Nikki Green, and I am a life and business resiliency expert. I have been helping people for over two decades overcome their challenges and achieve their life and business goals. I wrote Chameleon Mindset for others seeking clarity while acclimating to new situations. This entertaining yet research-based guide to transitions will open your mind to unique strategies for finding purpose and achieving your goals. Through my new book, you will create the happy life you desire with five philosophies for change, beginning with C for creative adaptability. Move from resistance to resilience by assessing and adjusting your risk tolerance. The practical lessons in Chameleon Mindset will help you shift your mindset, sharpen your skill set, and overcome the things holding you back from dealing with change. We'll have the new online course coming soon. There are half a dozen modules in total, but the way you choose to pursue your destiny, it's up to you. Each module can be done independently or repeated as necessary to tackle new obstacles and new goals in your life. And you can earn extra chameleon coins for uncovering them. What are chameleon coins, you might ask? These are reward XP that you can earn to purchase additional chameleon mindset benefits as you progress through the course. You can get swag, group coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching, exclusive event tickets, and networking opportunities. And if you collect enough coins, you can even earn a full day VIP intensive with me to work solely on your goals. And by joining the Chameleon Crew, you will also gain access to my network of thousands of influential people around the world with expertise to help you on your business, your personal endeavors, health and fitness, and so much more. Reserve a copy today and click below to be added to our subscriber list. Well, and it is a good point, right? The comparison versus the competing, because I always said, you know, when I saw someone do something even recently, right? So um, another entrepreneur friend of mine, she's like, oh, well, you know, I want to get on 100 podcasts before this project launches. And I was like, well, that seems like a lot of podcasts, you know, but then I was like, oh, well, that's possible. So I, I, I love how it starts to show you things that maybe you didn't realize were possible, but in a way that you want to go achieve it, you know, and emulate them, you know, in a positive way, right? And instead of going, oh, well, you know, she's never going to get that or, you know, that's not a possible thing. You know, different things of way you compare yourself or oh, I'm not good enough because I can't do the same thing. So I, I love that c compare and contrast between comparing and competing. And, and with that, I mean, when you compete, right, and, and there is that healthy competition, there is collaboration as well, which is brilliant, right? I mean, if people don't understand today that it's all about that collaboration, right? It, like, Nikki, you have your podcast. I just launched my podcast. I'm like, oh my God, 100 episodes. That's awesome. You know what? I'm going to get there as well. So, so you're great. And, and if I sat down with you to, to get some tips on how to get there, right? When you achieve it, you're going to share that with me because you understand that, yes, it is all of a collaboration and it's beautiful. And I think it's so important, especially as many, especially young people are starting to be like, well, Maybe I want to be an entrepreneur. Maybe I want to do my own thing, right? And they think of it as their own business. But the part of the like working in bigger corporations that you get a benefit of is you do get to learn from a lot of people around you. And I continue to encourage people. It doesn't matter even if someone has exactly the same business or a similar, you know, business that you want to go into. Do positive competition, just like you're saying, right? Is go learn from them, partner with them because at some point, there is going to be a fork in the road and, you know, you guys are going to have your own opinions on how you run things, but you can also help each other, right? And do good things together and accelerate each other's business. And so I think it's a really great way of where I'm seeing a lot of new businesses going is that there isn't this like we're at war, we're in a battle. It's more like we're on a team and we're all trying to, you know, do better for ourselves, right? Yeah, 100%. And, and, and it is successful people who are going to share with you the most. And that's why they're probably successful, but they understand that, right? Which is absolutely brilliant. Another great uh, nugget I, I grabbed out of the chapter that I love is that you said, opportunities are not lost. They're simply given to someone else. I love that part of that trade-off mentality as well is because there's this whole, you know, FOMO, like fear of missing out on something. But if you look at it in an opportunity way where, well, maybe someone who really needs it is going to get it instead of you. Um, so maybe talk about how that inspired you or how you've seen that work. There's two ways to look at this, right? And that phrase. And it's interesting how people interpret it. And, and you took it right now, which a lot of people have done that, where, you know what, it's, there's a lot of sharing in that phrase, right? That 
okay, so it's not going to get lost. Someone else will take it. That's a beautiful thing. It's, it's, it's something that we can share because someone is waiting for that opportunity, right? And they can get it and they will get it. On the other end, and I do talk a lot about this, and, and this is, I think, where I'm trying to make that point when people are not making decisions and they're waiting, right? And they're not moving forward and they're losing on opportunities. Is not like, because many people say this, they say, oh, you know what? That's okay. If it's not now, then I'll do it or I'll get it later. No, it won't be there later because it would have been given to someone else who was ready to take it, who didn't overthink <laughs> the opportunity. But they just said, you know what? I'll take it. I'll figure out the details later. That's really, truly what I mean when I say that. When I say opportunities are not lost, they are given to someone else. So if that doesn't put the fire on you to make a decision, then nothing else will. So, so true. And I just really love that. It's, it's sparking that fire of why do you have to make a decision? It's not that this decision is going to be available for you possibly, you know, a, a day from now, a week from now. You have to really start just making those decisions and being comfortable with them. Because like you said, a lot of people make the decision and then they slide back a week later like, uh, I want to rethink the whole thing, you know, and then it's also, again, usually too late. But you can't constantly be, like you said, on the fence. You have to step on one side or the other and just go forward and be glad you made the decision and it's going to be what it's going to be. Figure out the details later. Another part I love is that you said that there's more than 24 hours in a day and that, you know, time became an irrelevant measure in achieving your goals. Uh, I, I think that's great because so many people use that excuse of, oh, I'm busy and oh my gosh, I have all these things, you know. Um, and I love your approach to this. So maybe share a little bit about this uh, wonderful way of managing your schedule and getting more done. So we're trained to compartmentalize time. A watch, nine to five, you know, it's, it's, it's that compartment of, of there's only 24 hours. There's only so much time in a day. So that is very limiting when you think about it. And it puts a lot of pressure on people because like, oh, I got to get it done. Like it's, it's today, right? I only have that time to get it done. And I talk about in my book that I, I, I guess I always kind of lived my life that way, but I became present to how I really take time. I control time. I really control time. I didn't know how I did it, but it is because I never thought of 24 hours and it's only when I started working in my business, I started working different time zones, Australia, Latin America, Europe, right? So I was working in the future. I was working in the past and it's like, this is pretty cool. So that I, in that moment, I became present to the fact that, oh, wow, this is how I actually get to get things done and how liberating, how less stressful it is to think that way and to say, you know what, I'm going to create my own time. I'm going to decide that today I'm going to work three hours. And guess what? When you do that, actually, you're much more efficient than saying, oh, I an eight hour work. How much do you really do in those eight hours? Maybe two hours of work. So when you actually think about the fact that you can control time, and you step out from that 24-hour day and you create a nine-hour day, you create a three-hour day, you create a 16-hour day, you create a 36-hour day, right? Not only do you become more efficient, more free, emotionally free, but guess what? You actually have more time to other things, to do other things that you thought, to your point, and this is how you started, Nikki, saying, I don't have, there's not enough time. I don't have the time. It's bullshit. Excuse me. Can I say bullshit? Yes. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm not political. But it's yes. I mean, how many times do people say, I don't have time? Yes, you do. Create the time. Make the time. So much more. There's so much freedom in it. I totally agree. And, you know, I, I worked a long time in Silicon Valley at all these global companies working across all these time zones. My best friend was Australian, you know, and so I'd always ask her, you know, at the end of the day, I was like, how's tomorrow going? <laughs> what can I expect, you know, and see if we can see into the future a little bit of, of what's coming. But it really does free up, you know, how you see things. And, and I like that way of 
if you frame it and whether it's work or other things, it's like, oh, I, I need to go, you know, do the laundry or something. And it's like, OK, well, this is just going to be 30 minutes of, of my day. And then I have free time to do the rest. And so I think it's really like you said, you become so laser focused. I've watched so many people where if you told them they have to work an eight hour day, but they didn't really have eight hours of work to do or tasks to complete. They just wasted the eight hours. So it was kind of like, well, what am I paying you for to be here? You, you'd be just as happy like taking off and going to do something. And and conversely, it's funny, um, when one of my last companies, we went to unlimited PTO, so unlimited time off. You could take as much as you need to at discretion, you know, of getting your work done with your manager. We're all adults. We can, you know, manage our schedule. And one of the studies that came out said that actually, if you give people a specific amount of vacation, like four or five weeks, they take every single minute that you're going to give them. But they're actually more responsible if you just let them manage their schedule. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Be the master of your time, right? Absolutely. I remember when I went on job share after my my daughter was born, my fourth daughter, I knew that I wasn't, I wasn't going to go back full time. And let me tell you, those three days that I worked, I was the most productive ever that I had ever been. Yeah, it, it really is going to change, I think, how we work, too, if we continue to keep this mentality up of, you know, this nine to five hasn't happened in a very long time. You know, people are working in hybrid environments across time zones, balancing their personal lives. And the more we can open up to this idea of letting people be productive at their peaks of productivity at a time which works best for them, they're not distracted by other things going on. Stay focused, get the test done and get out. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Well, uh, time flies when we're having fun. Um, but I did want to, you said you have a new podcast. So I do want to kind of drop that out to others if they'd like to check you out there or where else they can check you out if they'd like to learn more about all the exciting adventures you're up to. Yes. Thank you. So the podcast is uh, called Call Me Crazy by with Sherry Gabriel. So you can uh, look for it on uh, Spotify, Apple Podcast, um, and uh, Shiri dot, dot coach. That's where people can find me. And uh, I love just just talking to people, connecting with people. I am a master connector. So anyone who wants to connect with me and uh, you need any help, any advice, you know, and uh, like I, I always say this, there's 7 billion people in the world. There's enough pie for everybody to go around. So I, I hope everybody reaches out and, and we can get to know one another and support one another because that's what we need. Absolutely. Well, we'll continue adding Shiri and others into our chameleon community. So that way you guys can continue to find mentors, just connect with them as people. And you never know what is going to excite your interest. So if you guys have not picked up a copy of the book, The Great Leadership Awakening is out now on Amazon and you can get both the ebook and the physical copies now too. And as I'm out at events, as well as many of the other women in the book, um, we'll have copies probably for sale for, and I think we went through and signed a bunch of copies too. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I loved reading your chapter. I think so many other people are going to be really inspired by some of the concepts that you have in there. And I hope that they connect with you and learn more about you and start to listen to your new podcast. Nick, yeah, I appreciate you for everything that you do. Thank you. Thanks everyone for joining us today for another episode of Stand Up and Stand Out. You know you can catch us where all the cool kids hang out that do podcasts on all the major platforms. And if you want to connect with Nikki directly, you can get a hold of me on my personal site, the Nikki Green 360com There you can check out my website. You can see any of my new books. You can learn more about this podcast and follow us on social. Can't wait to hear from you and we'll see you on the next episode. Bye.